What's up, everyone? This is Erica again. Um, I have for forgot that um, about those who have locks and um, you know had an occasional lock to fall out. And I had an idea a while ago, a long time ago. I'm not saying that actually happened to me. Um, yeah, it did. I had a lock to detach from where it was thin, and it broke, and it kind of broke my heart. But, um, I remember, remember simply just sewing it back on. And what I'm doing now, I'm basically just threading a needle. And it's, it's kind of bent. Don't laugh at me. I mean, it's been through some stuff. Um, use a color thread that you think will match your hair color. If you think your hair needs a brown thread, then, or whatever, do it. If you have a yellow, you get the idea. Um, I'm just using this as an example. I'm not really going to be using a lock today, um, but I'm going to use a strand of the Bob Marley weave that I had got from my bun to demonstrate, you know, how to do this. What I'm doing is, I'm done, you know, I've, when I sewed it, I mean, I put it through the eye of the needle. It's two strands. I want to have two strands because it will be stronger. You don't want to use one strand because all I'm going to do is detach if you tug on it. Um, and then I want to make sure there's a, a hard, no, a knot in the, at the end, a hard knot. And when, that can be simply done by just wrapping it around your finger and just, as if you're doing this, and just roll the knot through and just pull. And then now you have a knot. This was bigger than what I want. I just knotted it twice, so that's why it's so big. Um... The idea of the thread is that if you keep it in there long enough and you keep it tight enough, tight enough, it's going to start meshing with your locks and you won't start and you won't tell because I can't even tell which lock I use it on. Um, that's all it's going to do. It's going to frizz up and you know, as you wash it, it's just going to unlock with your normal hair locks. So, this is the one I'm going to use. Actually, it's not. I'm back. I'm going to use the strand from the Bob Marley weave. The other one I didn't loop. I needed something, you know, to, to you know, simulate as the lock. So, and this one is really big. So, don't pay attention if it looks kind of funny. It's because, I mean, come on, they're. Kind of, this one's bigger than my regular lock, but I just want to show you. Um, what you want to do is, and this one's not going to be a tight because, of course, this is weave, so it has these little loops in it and little, you know, little parts in it. Compared to, if you just had your lock, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have that. So you're just going to want to come up through any place of your lock. You want to go for the middle. Um. And then you want to do the same with your own lock. Don't worry, um, I sew quite a bit, so it doesn't matter. I can take it out. And all you do is going through your lock. So you're trying to go through the middle of the lock, and you're going through the your other part of your lock. And that's all you're doing. You're simply sewing your lock back together. And you're going to keep on going through as much as you feel that you need to. Um, to make it look as normal as possible. Because, I mean, this is not going to look you know, right because, for one, it's my end. But if your lock has split, you may want to, like, cut a little bit so it can be both parts can be even. And so you can sew it on top of each other like that. Um, and that's all you're doing. You're going up and down and sewing your lock. I'm trying not to poke my eye out if I can. And that's all you're doing. And you're seeing how it's starting to, you know. And once you go through as many times as you want, as many times you think it's going to stay, um, maybe even tug on a little bit to see if this one's kind of loose because I'm not really trying to do it tight. Um, tug on a little bit and to see if it stays. 
Um, and even when I pulled it, as you can see, it's not going anywhere. But you need to make sure that you do not tug on it for a while. Um, and I, of course, after you knot it, which I'm going to show you how to knot it right quick. Alright, you're going to go through it one more time. And you want to go through it. Not, oops, caught some of the hair. You go through the loop. And you want to go in through the loop again. You want to do a double knot. Oh, I didn't go in it. But you get the idea. And go through it again. Just give me time. And you want to pull it. As close to the lock as you can. And then you may want to secure it and go through it and do another, another, you know, whatever the same way. Um, and then you would cut it as close to the knot as you can. And what I would do if it was if it was my lock, like I have some gel right here, I would put this over the part. And start palm rolling it as if it was a regular lock. So that way you get used to it. Um, and one thing you'd also do so it can signify which lock is the one you sewed on. I would sew a shell on or some kind of you know ornament. But I know shells can be used for men as well. Little, uh, just a little one. You don't have to have a huge one. Uh, one of those little shells that you can put in your hair to signify that's the lock that you sewed on and you may not want to pull on that as much. And if you have more than one lock and you put more than one shell in your hair, who's the, who will know that you're doing that to, you know, signify that's the lock you don't need to pull on. But after a while, um, the lock will start to repair itself um, because if you sewed it right, the yarn, well, the thread will start to blend in with your lock and you won't be able to tell after a while. But that is a solution where you won't have to worry about your heart being broken because one of your locks broke. So, hope that helps everyone. Bye.